Hello everybody and welcome back to Duna, to my The Martian Recreation, where we follow Bark Kerman on another trip with his trusty rover. This time, well, this time Bark has something he has to do a bit further up north. So you can see some purple thingy in the distance, that's where we're headed. And well, while we're gonna drive there for just a short while, I've time accelerated this a little bit, let's talk about these rovers. I can hit speeds of about 20 meters per second with this rover here. You can see it on the head-up display. Look at that! Fuse box! Yay! I love the level of details on these cockpits. Oh, rock! No? Okay. Great, we avoided that. So, as I was saying, I can reach up to 20 meters per second in this rover on the surface of Duna that equals to about, well, 72 kilometers an hour. So, that's a really speedy rover. If you look at the Curiosity rover currently operating on Mars, that thing has a top speed of, well, significantly less than that. So it travels 90 meters per hour. So that equals to about 0 0.025 meters per second, which is basically 2.5 centimeters per second, which is really, really slow. But on the other hand, Curiosity is an autonomous rover. It has to survey the surroundings and look at where it's going and yeah, has to assess the terrain and then make the decision where to drive next. And be careful about it because, well, we don't want to end up with another defective rover on Mars now, do we? Okay, so we're making headway towards our destination. And we hope that we don't crash. Well, Bark at least hopes it. So we're almost across the hill. There we go. Already seeing the target in the distance. Well, this is also a test of how far we can get with the rover and the improved solar panel array on top of the rover. So as you can see in the top right corner, I have opened the resource tab and if I don't press the accelerator too intensely, I have also disabled the rear wheel drive, so the rear wheels are just steering now, they're not uh, providing motor power. So this lowers the energy consumption significantly. As long as the terrain is flat like it's here, that's not a problem. So yeah, we should be able to make our trip to where we want to go in the end, which is, of course, the Ares 4 launch site. Because, well, as nice as it is on Duna, we really want to get away from here. Okay now, so in the distance we have, well, it is the wreckage, well not wreckage, it's the, it is the remains of the original Pathfinder mission. Yes, you may re remember a very long while back I landed a replica of the Pathfinder on Duna. And this is where we're going. There it is, in the background. Slowly approaching, well, we are the ones approaching, but visually it is approaching towards us. There we go. And the Sojourner rover on the left. Okay, let's park real quick and survey the equipment. Okay, looks fine, everything appears to be intact. Let's get out and have a closer look. Okay, well, the real Sojourner rover was, of course, quite smaller than this one. Or is it still on Mars now? And there we... whoops! No, don't move that thing. Don't move it anywhere. Okay, and there's the communications array of Pathfinder, and it looks good. So, we probably have a way to contact home. Yay! Bark is happy. What a happy international space camper he is. 
Okay, so let's get our tools. There we go. Boom. We need our utility rover. There it is. Come on. Yes. Okay, and let's line this thing up. Get out there. And decouple that antenna. There we go. Boom. Okay. Please drop. Don't hit me. Yes. Okay, let's get this into position so we can pick it up more easily. There we go. Okay, bark. Just be careful. Don't ruin that antenna. Don't ruin your last chance to communicate with your home planet now. Okay, let's pick that thing up. Come on. There we go. Okay, now time to attach that to the big rover. Oh, well, it is a tight fit in there. So what is the best way to get the docking ports to meet each other? Eh. This is a little tricky, but I think we're going to make it. Hmm, not high enough. Okay, what shall I do next? Maybe if I push it? Okay, let's get down there. Let's push a little. No, no effect. Ouch. Okay, let's try to... Aha! Uh -huh. I've just released the claw and yes, it has attached to the rover. The rover has now a communications antenna. Yay! I was honestly thinking about also bringing Sojourner along and maybe dock it inside the lower cargo bay, but then I realized it's probably too high and too heavy for the resource, well, the utility vehicle to transport, so I decided to take a little joyride with Sojourner on the surface of Duna. But for some reason it does not really want to carry Bark, Kerman. Oh well. So let's just grab all the science we can get from this rover while we're here. So at least something of the Pathfinder mission can come back to the planet should Bark someday miraculously get back home. Okay, so time to also dock the utility rover to the big rover. There we go. Boom, the magic of zooming through solid matter just by leaving your command seat. Yay! Okay, now time to head home. And this time I'm not going to bother you with the entire trip, so I'm going to right skip ahead through this. And here we are already closing in on our home base. There it is, home away from home. Well, I wouldn't call it home sweet home, because yeah, it can't be fun to be stuck on a foreign planet somewhere. Okay. Our usual docking maneuver. There we go. Brakes overacting a little bit. And... Boom! So yeah, we now have our entire installation hooked up to a rover with a communications antenna, so Bark's next order of business after getting, of course, the utility vehicle back down there because, well, saving a game with engaged claws has some Kraken invocation capabilities, let's just call it that. So let's park this over here, get back into base, and yeah, well, first a visual inspection of the antenna. Yes, it survived the trip perfectly. So let's try to make contact. What will they say back on Kerbin, back at the space center? Hmm. Meanwhile, a new morning is beginning at the Kerbal Space Center. Scientists, engineers and managers are coming to their desks, 
reviewing some data, making some new inventions. And after reading the communications reports, the head administrator has only one thing left to say. What? Thanks for watching. Goodbye.